service into your hands. Have your way and let your will be done. 
Mm-hmm. We thank you. We bless you. Mm-hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I just want to talk Amen. to somebody. Very briefly. Let's take our Bibles to the book of James, chapter 1, 22, so about 24. James, chapter 1. And if you are there, you can read it for us. God bless you. I'm reading. James, chapter 1. James, chapter 1. James, chapter 1, 22 to 24. Let's come on reading it for James chapter 1, verse 22 to verse number 24. Somebody read, I'm driving. Is anyone willing to read it for us? James chapter 1, verse 22 to 23. Can somebody say they want to read it, or do you want me to read it? James chapter 1, 22 to 24. Yeah. James chapter 1, 22 to 24. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says It's like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen. This is the word of God talking about listening, listening and doing. Listening and doing. Listening and doing. He said, do not merely listen to the word. And so deceive yourself. But do what it says. Don't just listen to the word. And this, he said, do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says, it's like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. The Bible used his because everyone in the Bible is described as a man. The spirit is a man. You know that. So anyone who looks at his face in the mirror, and after looking at himself, you go away and immediately forget what it looks like. So don't tell me this is just speaking to the man. No, no. It's not just to the man. Everyone. Be a doer of the word of God. So if you want to succeed in life, then do as the word of God says. That's what I was telling you mm-hmm. when I talk about, about the blood. You do, you, you imply the word of God. That is when it becomes effective for you. You can, by listening to it, by reading it, and going about your daily activity and coming back and reading, it's not going to do anything. But by implying, applying the word of God, by doing what the word says, because the word is an instructional word. It's something very instructive. It comes with direction, and when you obey to it, you prosper. It's like a lead. The Bible says your word is like a lamp unto our feet. So it must help you walk. See where you're walking and walk in the light. So if you want to only succeed in life, then do as the word says. Amen. And James says that if you hear the word of God, then you don't do as he says. Oh my goodness. James tells us that if you hear the word of God and you don't do as it says, you are deceiving yourself. I always say Christians, we pray a lot, but most of our prayer is action, action for stuff. But those stuff that we're asking for, sometimes it's already in line for us. But by doing the word of God, by applying the word of God, by obeying the word of God, we're going to reach to what we're asking for. It's already ahead of us. Because those things are given. They're add-ons. 
But most Christians of these days don't, don't, like, don't worry about the word of God. They worry to hear the prophetic word, and they worry to hear a prayer against demonic, all kinds of stuff. But when it comes to the word of God, the word of God that can help you to really escape from all these entities, we don't want to take it. We don't want to hear it. If it's boring hearing it and it's boring doing it and it's, it's hard doing it, that's what we have in mind, that it's so hard, it's so hard, and God understands that. No, 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 no. It's very simple. But it's called killing the flesh and really standing strong in your spirit, man. With most Christians, the flesh has overtaken us. The flesh is what is killing us. The flesh is not allowing us to really live the spiritual life. The flesh is overcoming, overtaking and overcoming the spirit. So become, be, be redoing the word of God or implying the word of God, living as the word becomes hard and difficult and tough for us. But James says that if you hear the word of God and you don't do it, as the word says, you are deceiving yourself. You didn't specify what we are deceiving ourselves from? They say we are deceiving ourselves. And we are like a man who looks at himself in a mirror and immediately forget what he looks like once he turns away from the mirror. Do you remember what you look like when you look in the mirror? Do you look the same? The Bible says, if you want to do well in life, then, child of God, you must stop deceiving yourself and be a doer of the word of God. It's about time where we walk with the word. It's about time where we imply the word. It's about time where we apply the word. It's about time where we become, we become the liver of the word. We become the word. Live with the word. Feel like you can live without it. It's not time where you just fill your, your, your brains with the word, or your heart with the word, your spirit with the word, everything with the word, but don't imply it or don't apply it. No. It's about time we use the word. We apply it as it says so we can succeed in life. That's the key way to succeed in life. If you want to succeed, live by the word. Live by the word. If you want to do well in life, you must stop deceiving yourself and be a doer of the word. I am not someone to know. Not to them, I am someone. Jesus likes some friends in the Bible. Let's see who Jesus likes. Look at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 and 25. Jesus says something there. Amen. Take your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 and 25. I read the word of God. The Bible says that, Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and put them into practice, it's like a wise man who built his house on a rock. You see who Jesus likes? Anyone who hears these words of mine. Who would you hear his words from? The Bible. The Word of God. Who hear these words of mine? And you put them into practice. We're talking about doing. It's like a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the Bible said the rain came down, the stream rose, and the wind blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. So anyone that is a doer of the word, Is fortified in the rock. You are strong. Nothing, nothing can take you down. God is not promising that nothing will hit us. No, He says, "Look, the rain, the rain came down, so the rain will hit you. The stream will rise against you. The wind will blow. It will beat against you. Yet He says, it did not fall. You will not fall because you are fortified in the Word of God." The word of God is, is, is built. You are the word. The word is built on the rock. Bible says the doer of the word is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. It's unmovable. You will become unshakable, unmovable, untouchable. That's when the Bible says, "Touch not my anointed." So if 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 if, if, if you be a doer of the word of God, 
and not just a listener and spectator, not just a judge that judges the people that, that, that are implying the word of God or the people that are living by the word of God or judging other people, but becomes a doer of the word, child of God. I would say you are a wise man. This is who Jesus calls you. A wise man. That build his house on a rock. But if not, if not, the Matthew chapter 7 verse 26, then the Bible says, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice, it's like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. Two different people, a wise and a foolish builder. Who hears the word? Hears the word of God. The man that hears the word of God and do not put it into practice, the Bible says it's a foolish man who built his house on the sand. So, child of God, miracles are great. It comes with the word of God. By applying the word of God, by working, that's why God will give you direction sometimes when you have a problem. He says, the direction will come, and the man of God will lead the direction. Okay, do this, do that. Even that, Christians, we choose the direction we want to do. We are comfortable with some directions. Some, we don't do it. We don't care. Yes, you bypass all the directions and then stand by the word. Be, apply the word. That is greater direction than any direction. I'm telling you. Hey, things will hit you. He said rain will come down on you. The sun will hit you. Hey, things will rise against you. They will blow you. They will, the wind will come. No matter what they do, they cannot move you because you are filled with the word of God. You are empowered by the word of God. And that which is empowered by the word of God is unmovable. You can't destroy that person. The person that has the word and is a doer of the word is wise. And that person is untouchable. You can't touch them. But that which hears the word and don't do it. Oh, Bible says you're a foolish man. So tonight, all I want to open your eyes to, be a wise man or a wise woman. Not a foolish man or the foolish woman. Be a wise man or a wise woman. Not the foolish man or a foolish woman. I know everyone on this line, anyone hearing my voice is wise and tries their best to live by the word. But it's a lot of distractions that be around us that don't allow us to stand by the word do by the word, act by the word, live by the word, walk by the word, sleep by the word. It's distractions around us. And a little bit, I call some like fleshly thirst, physical thirst, the thirst that is unquenchable, the thirst that hasn't been quenched yet. It's cautioning you not to really establish the word of God in your life and be a doer of it. Anyone with a word and is prayerful is dangerous. Have the word, but be a doer of the word. Many have it, but they are not doers of the word. Many, 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 many believers, even unbelievers, some have the word, but they fail to apply the word. They fail to live by the word. And if you don't live by the word, you're a foolish man. How can God give his blessing to a foolish man? Because that foolish man is on the sun. So when he washed away, the blessing of God will be washed away. God wants his blessing to come and stand. It's a transgenerational. He's not looking at just you. He's looking at the generation to come. Look at Abrahamic time. And we are still transcending. So the blessing that is coming is not just coming for you. When you die, you take it in your grave. No, no, no. His blessing will stand. Because I would say his word shall never pass away. His word is blessed, and it's a blessing. So everyone that comes, since you have implied the word, use the word. Everyone that comes after you will be a user of the word as well. 
and the blessing will just flow, 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 flow. For God will not give his, his, his blessing to a foolish man that when he wash away, he will be washed away. But he will give it to a wise man that the blessing will stand forever and ever for transgeneration. I don't know, maybe you have been trying to live right by the word, but it's hard. There is some physical thirst, cravings, that is still not quenched yet. That is causing you not to be able to give up. That is causing you not to be able to work as the Lord wants you to work. Walk as the Lord wants you to walk. Do as the Lord wants you to do. It's stopping you from being a doer or is delaying you from becoming a quick doer of the word of God. That you will see the manifestation of the blood. Some people... All you need, all you need, all you need to do is to walk right, be a doer of the word, and God will show himself strong and powerful. His blessing is at hand. But implying the word so that we can build our house on a strong rock, the devil comes and distracts you from building your house on a rock. So now it becomes very difficult and tough for you. Everything you get in your hands washed away. Whatever you lay your hands on, incomplete. You are living a life of incomplete. You are living in a building of incomplete. Because within you, within your heart, there is two thoughts. It's different what you come in the church and do and what you go home, what you do. It's different what you speak to your, ch- your church your members and the Christian the believers when you meet. And it's different words when you're out there at your job. Or out there on your own, you are still struggling with your inner tenacity. You are struggling with something within. You are dealing with situations. God don't bring his word to disgrace you. God didn't bring his word tonight to point you out. Don't feel ashamed. Don't feel disgraced. Don't feel like the, 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 oh, the pastor is speaking to me and I feel some type of way. It's okay. You are fighting something of the flesh that your spirit is not up there to overcome it. The Lord brings his word tonight to heal you. He brings his word tonight to restore you. He brings his word tonight to empower you, to bless you, to fortify you, to cause you, to shift, to give you a shift and to bring you back in his purpose and just draw your mind back on something, to restitute your mind. Tonight, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but the Lord is telling me to tell you, child of God, as long as you are ready. You see, you, you know it. You are battling with something. You want to live by the word. Yes, you are a Christian, all right. You've been, you've been baptized, all right. You accepted Christ, all right. But you are still fighting with something physically. You are still fighting something within. Or something is fighting you from reaching that extent. Something is fighting you from doing the will of God. Something is, is stopping you from going all out for God. Even sometimes when they call for help or seed, you can't even rise up and do it because something is fighting you. When they call for prayer, you know they call for prayer of the righteous, you will sit down because you are know you know very well that within you you don't qualify. Don't be afraid. Don't feel like shame. In the Bible it happened when the Lord was looking for something, nobody qualified. That's why he had to manifest the word of Jesus to come through. Don't feel ashamed. It's okay. Someday, sometime, someday, sometime in life. You repaint your house. Someday, sometime, someday, sometime in life, you change the things in your house. Your couch, you will change it. You will paint. You will change some things. The curtains. You, you, you paint. You make it look brand new again. It's all right. We just thank God for the word coming tonight. That when we be doers of the word, we listen, we hear, and we do. We imply it. We become like a wise man that built his house on a rock. But when we hear the word of God, like every day we hear it. But when it comes to doing it, we don't. Bible says, become a foolish man that build his house on the sun. It's just giving you a restitutional mind. If you really accept the word and be a doer of the word, it's telling you what is going to happen. You see, I love God. I love the Bible. It's always telling us two things. If you do it and if you don't, this is what's going to happen. So now it's your choice. You see, they always, the Bible always throws choices out there for us. If you do it, this will happen. If you don't do it, this is going to happen. Wow. So we look at it and we say, what? I don't want to be washed away. Of course. I don't want to be called a foolish man. Just imagine right now if your daughter or your son just calls you, Mom, Daddy, you are foolish. Hey, African parents will destroy that kid. They will beat that kid onto, onto hell. Or somebody, just somebody call you, hey, you foolish man. Or you foolish man of God. Or you foolish woman. Or foolish somebody. 
you feel very insulted, very disrespected, very aggravated, very distracted. That day, you probably can't even do what you're supposed to do. The joy, you, whatever it's a church or a job, whatever it is, you probably you won't, you won't do it peacefully. You won't feel happy being around that person anymore. You want to just slaughter that person. So you don't want to be called foolish. God don't want to call you foolish. The word is just giving us two things. It says, wise, build your house on a rock. Foolish, build your house on the sun. Now it's up to you to build your house. Where are you going to build your house at? Are you going to allow the situation that is bombarding you to pull you away from building your house on the rock? Is the situation causing you not to imply the word of God? If you need healing, it's the word of God. If you need blessing, it's the word of God. But we say behind the word of God, there is a miracle. The miracle didn't tell you if it's money, if it's house, if it's marriage, if it's papers, if it's, if it's, if it's um, healing. The blessing is it. Behind the word of God, there is a blessing. So if you apply the word of God, there is a blessing. So if you don't apply the word of God, there is no blessing. So if you need blessing, go to the word of God. If you need healing, go to the word of God. He says, I sent my word to heal. So by applying the word, you see, the doctor, they, tell you, they brought the, the Tylenol to heal pains. When you are in pain, you run to the Tylenol, the paracetamol, or whatever, and you take it because you have the mindset that by applying that paracetamol, you'll be healed. By applying that choco cream, your pains will go away. By applying that Bengay, you know, it will ease you of your pain. So you apply before you get your healing. So when the pain comes, you don't say, in the name of Bengay, be healed. No, you apply it. The Bengay on your skin. And you are healed sometimes. So when you apply the word of God, every blessing you desire from God, you must receive it. It is a word. It says the word will not go and return void. Do it, and you'll get your healing. Do it, you get your blessing. Do it. But people, Christians now, we differentiate between what we want to do. We read the word, and we take some, the good one, some on the side, some on the other side. And we do some, and we leave some. If we're in our own, we are all in the same ministry. Let's say a church or whatever. The church is our body, but let's say, yeah, let's use it as a regular people see it. Church, the place of worship, fine. And let's say it's time to pay the bills there. And we say, oh, help, let's pay the bills over here for, so that the work of God will continue moving forward. Quickly, 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 you, you take yourself out of it. But when the church, when the people come together and say, oh, let's pray for the people that need marriage or money or finances or job, you quickly, 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 you enter yourself there. But what does the word of God say about blessing? Because the word of God takes blessing out, help out, supporting out, and only say, come and ask, ask, ask. No, it says apply the word, and the blessing follows. So you can't take some out, leave some, and you do some. No, 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 no. Let's pray for our brother. Mm, you, no, that's not your time. You won't pray for your brother. But who needs prayer? For this, you are the first person. But when it comes to let's pray for somebody else, you don't. Can't not mind that people. If you apply the word of God, be a doer of the word of God, become understanding to the word, you become a kingdom minded person. Everything pertaining to the kingdom, you are in it. Everything pertaining to the kingdom, you are in it. Your little strength here and there, we all know strong. Bible say we all are weak. But a little strength here and there, here and there together, we can accomplish something. But if you, if you take yourself out, we are short. But by you involving yourself, the kingdom is, 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 is at once. It means we all have the same understanding. Bible say two without understanding cannot move together, cannot work together, cannot do together. There is no understanding there. Because this one want to do B, this one want to do C. It's no understanding. But the understanding where we all want to do A, A, 
Tomorrow we want to do B, B. If we say we are doing A, we are all doing it together. If we say we are doing B, we are all doing it together. Then Bible says unity. When we unite like this, we ignite. Because by when we unite, there is nothing we cannot do. Especially if we have the word we are doing, we are applying the word. And when we lift up our voice and pray, the one that applies the word, one that does the word of God, is automatically right. Your righteous is doing the right thing. And if you automatically right, if you are doing the right automatically, you qualify to be holy. He who does the right thing is holy. So the prayer of the righteous is so powerful indeed that when we come together and we lift the prayer, God will answer us. But if you are not applying the word, no matter how amount of prayer you pray or someone will pray for you, something will still be left out. Because that something needs you to build that foundation on a rock. That something needs you to be a doer of the word of God. To see the manifestation of that something. Not everything prayer can, can, can overcome. Not everything fasting can overcome. Some things too, you must be a doer of the word of God. Matter of fact, everything, by doing, being a doer of the word of God, you can overcome it. Because if you're a doer of the word of God, you know you have to fast. Nobody will have to tell you. If you're a doer of the word, you know you have to live righteous. Nobody will tell you because you're a doer of the word, and the word teaches you to be righteous. And if, you, if, 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 if you're a doer of the word of God, you know. Automatically, you will help when it comes to kingdom tax. How they keep the kingdom moving forward. When God gives you something you know God gave you, you will be eager to, to support his ministry. You will be eager to push the ministry forward by a little strength. Your little strength here from A, little strength here from B, little strength here from C, little strength here from D, we come together. We accomplish something for the kingdom. It's a kingdom tax. It's a kingdom purpose. Kingdom-minded people always think deep about kingdom. The moving forward of the kingdom. Even before themselves. Because the Bible says, seek the kingdom first. Everything else will fall in place. So let's seek the kingdom right. Seek it right. Be a full doer. Don't take some out. Don't take some out. Do, do, be a doer of the word, please. It's about time. What Christians receive from being a doer of the word. There is a lot to receive from the word. There is a lot to see and to witness by being a doer of the word. You will know that they will throw hits at you. They will throw arrows at you. Sickness at you. Demons will come at you. Enemies will come. Your friends, your, your family, witches and wizards, they will write. They cannot hold. They can't bring you down. Because you are fortified. You are on the rock. Even the stone on the tomb, they couldn't roll it. How much more the rock? Father, thank you for your word. The word of God has come forth. I just want you to lift up your voice and talk to the Lord. Like God, anything that distracts me, hold me back from doing your tasks, performing fully your tasks, being a doer of the word of God. Father, tonight I surrender unto you. Some things are known. Some things are unknown. Some things are way beyond you. Some things are before you. And some things are really by you. You want to talk to God say, God, help me. The ones that is by me, I let go. The things that I want to do, Bible says, I'm not able to do, but the things I don't want to do are the things I do. The ones that are by me, Father, help me to let go. But the ones that are by, uh, beyond me, or way before me, generational, right? Father, I pray thee, God, break that cord. Break that cord. Break that cord. For I want to know you more. I want to live by your word. I want to live by you. I want people to see Jesus in me. I want people to see me and see example of Jesus. Oh, lift up your voice and begin to talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Hey, Kabara, da da bushanda. Libi ivan dere bosi kabiri araba ban dere bosia. Or lift up your voice and talk to God. Pejau ni oni nyambengkasa. Christians, pejau pejau ni oni nyambengkasa. Lift up your voice and talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. There are some things bothering you. Unless you are faithful, unless you are righteous already, then forget it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whatever is stopping you from moving, for stopping your family from moving to another dimension, it's stopping your children from getting to the next level. Whatever. Generation, right? That is stopping us, blocking us today. 
God, God, I break that call. I break that for the help us to live right. Help us to walk right with you. Help us to want to live by your word. We want to live by your word. Things that are stopping us, Father, help us. Let you help us. Let you God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, children of God, must let go to see the hand of God. You must let go to see the miracle of God. You must let go to see the next level. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I shall lift up your voice and pray unto the Lord tonight. May God see you through. May God our favor locate you. May God bless and come upon you. May the Spirit of God fill us all to the brim to be able to be a doer of His word, to be able to be a worker of His word, to be able to apply His word to see His glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of if it's a healing with desire, pray for the manifestation of one life. If it's a blessing with desire, I want to be behind this one. There is a miracle. May the blessing of the Lord never do us by. As we begin to walk by the word, we are doing by the word, we see through the word. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, arise, God, and let the enemy strike. Any work of the enemy that is forcing us from walking by your word, from doing your word, any distraction from out there, we come against that distraction. We break the power of destruction. We render it power. We set it in place. In the name of the Christ of Nazareth, let come out of us. And there is a very Amabasiano. The under of a bear of a shiny head, Coriander. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. We thank you, God. For the wash us from the kind of fire that's going to fall. We bring the fire and fire that's going to fall. Wash us, blame us, God. And you help us walk by your word. We thank you for breaking that cord. Whatever that is distracting us from being right with you, whatever that is holding us back from walking fully and right with you, in the name of Jesus, we shall not be called a foolish but we shall be called wise. We shall not build our houses on sand, but we shall build on the rock. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, yes, though they will throw things that our sun will come against us, stones will, will, throw, will be thrown at us, they shall rise against us, rain will come against us, but God it will not move us. Wind will blow, but we shall be strong. In the name of Jesus, we speak and we declare the power of God to fill us with the faith. We speak and declare your anointing to fill us with the faith. In the name of Jesus, Father, may we pray for that, but we pray for you and your word. May we pray for that, but we pray for your faith. May we pray for that, but we pray for you, your word of God. We pray to God in the name of Jesus. We pray to God in the name of Jesus. We pray to God in the name of Jesus. We establish the blood. We establish the blood. In the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, now from tonight, God will walk right with you, and we shall see the manifestation of your word in our life, that people will see the life in us, people will see us as Jesus, people will see us as the doer of the word, people will see us as something special, as something that they can't describe what they see, because we will be the life, and we will be the head and all the kids, for the rule of our heart, for God use us to rule as kings, may we pray for your, for your moving forward of your kingdom, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. And we pray that all our doings from today, our mind will become kingdom minded. Kingdom minded people that want to move your kingdom to another dimension. That wants to help your kingdom to move to another dimension. Not people that only want to get it, collect, 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 act, 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 act. But people that will imply that little we have to move your ministry forward, to move your kingdom forward, to touch lives out there. We pray and we thank you for this kind of spirit, God. We thank you for filling us to the brim. We thank you, oh God, for empowering us. We thank you, God, for coming through. For We thank you for your word that heals, your word that empowers, your word that restores, your word that revives. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for encouragement. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah and amen and amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Oh, I did not hear. I didn't hear a joyful amen. I didn't hear a joyful amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Today you didn't pray, you didn't destroy, you didn't break. It's okay. You have you are blessed. You have been filled to the brim. You have been your eyes have opened, you have been restored, you have been revived. Go out there and apply the word of God. Apply the word of God. Be a doer of the word of God. 
and the Lord's light will never leave you. His protection will be mighty upon you. His blessing will never do you by. And you shall see your generation, 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 generation to come living the blessed life because of the foundation you have set. God richly bless you. I want you to hear, I want to hear you shout, I am blessed and highly favored. I am blessed and highly favored.